everyone, it's Artful Artsy Amy here, and I'm going to show you one of my absolute favorite ways to introduce digital animation to students. It's using this online program called Piskel or Piskel App. A student actually showed it to me a few years ago, and I've been using it in my classroom ever since. What's really great about this is it's free, it's open source, it works with Google, so Google app of some type, and you can do several things with it. You can use it online. You also can download it um, as its own program and you can use it on a Mac or a PC and then you're not dependent upon internet. So it's really just up to you how you want to use it. I like to use it online. Um, the features online are just as nice as the one that you download. So when you get here, you can either create a sprite, so you don't even have to log in to create something. So if you have a school district that doesn't allow students to log in online, you can just have them create. The only issue is that they won't be able to save a project and go back. They can download whatever it is that they create in that one session, but if Piskel freezes up or it crashes, the student does lose their work. I like to have students sign in. So the way you do that is you just click on sign in. I've signed it a into this before so it's just going to automatically take me to my gallery the first time you do it if you have ever used a Google email before it will pop up that Google email automatically and ask if that is what you want to use that is amazing for our students who are already using a Google owned email because that is just going to sluice them right on in and they don't have another password that they have to remember so I'm gonna click sign in and it's loading all of my sprites. In Piskel, anything you create is called a sprite. So we wanna make sure that we're using the language of animation. Um, any type of character that is animated when we talk about gaming or we talk about animations is actually called a sprite. Um, and I like that word sprite because Piskel uses it, animators use it. Scratch, if you're doing any type of coding in that, also uses sprites. So we're gonna use that word sprite and you can see this is my gallery of all of the animations that I have ever made. Made. All right, I'm going to click on create a sprite. So this is your creation pane in Piskel. It, some of this should look fairly familiar. Over here you've got several tools um, and we have several other items here and I'm going to kind of go over them. The first is the pen tool and you have four options for the pen tool. So you can make a pen that's that size you can make a pen that's that size, a pen that's this size, and then a pen that's this size, right? So whichever you like. If you don't like the marks you've made, you can choose the eraser tool, or you can also use the option on your computer for edit undo, um, which is control Z or Apple Z, depending on what type of device you're on. So I'm going to erase. Um, you also have a square tool, and so you can see it's going to use whichever pen size I've on. So I, I find this a little big, so I'm going to do my control C to get rid of that. Go back to my regular pen size. So I can make a rectangle. I can make a circle. I also have these tools which help me select things. Those are more advanced tools and it's not that you shouldn't use them. Students will start to use them on their own. But since this is probably your first time ever using Piskel, I would encourage you to sort of keep it to the pen tool, these um, shape tools, the eraser tool. This is your paint bucket tool. So um, if I were to have a circle, this is how I select color. This seems to be one of the more challenging things for students, and it's not hard, it's just a little trick to it. You actually have two pieces to selecting a color. The color you've chosen will preview right here. So if I wanted to choose a red, I have to move the rectangle, but I also have to move the circle, because see, I can do dark red or a pink even. I'm gonna choose sort of this dedicated red color here. Get my paint bucket tool. And there we are, nice, bright, vibrant red. Um, there's one more tool in here that I think as a teacher you would find really interesting. I use this tool, and um, you can always just switch back to whichever color you want. I like it remembers the colors you've used. I'm going to select this vertical mirror tool, and I can change the axis. I can use a horizontal axis, or I can use horizontal and vertical, so I can change it up. Um, but this is particularly wonderful, especially if you're learning about something like insects. It does the mirror image work 
for you. So it's pretty fabulous. Um, those are sort of the basic tools. Another nice tool is the selection tool. So if I have drawn with a bunch of this red, but I have this black and I want to get back to that red, I can select that red tool. So I'm going to create an image really quickly and then I'm going to show you how to animate it. All right, guys, I just made this happy apple and I want to show you first how to save because Piscal doesn't automatically save. Um, so it is important to save often. So you just go over here. You can't tell students to click on a disc that really doesn't have a lot of meaning to, for them. Um, but to you and I, it does to older people. So I just tell them the middle icon and you just save. You have a few options to save. If you save to your gallery, it's gonna to go to that place I was showing you before. It keeps it there for you. So I'm gonna to save to my gallery. Um, you know it's saved because a little Pac-Man appears. So if you look up there at the very top where it says Happy Apple, as I click Save Your Gallery, you'll see a little Pac-Man. There he is, now it's saved. So now I'm ready to animate. I have an image. Um, by the way, if you're over here and your image looks like that, it's really small. I don't know why sometimes Pisco likes to default to the small preview. You can just sort of hover and you can say um, full and it'll show you the nice full animation or full drawing. Right now all we have is a drawing. Um, in the right hand side, this is our preview. In the left hand side, this is our frame. That's why there's a number one. So in animation, there's something called frames per second. And that means that's how many images you're seeing per second of the animation. We call those frames, we don't call them images. When you look at like a regular cartoon that's on television or Netflix, somewhere like that, um, you're talking about 15 frames per second. When you're watching like a full feature Disney animation, it's probably more like 20 to 22 frames per second. So that's a lot of art um, and we could probably just have a, an amazing discussion about that. But right now we're just talking about frames per second in terms of Piscal. Um, you'll see over here, there's a little FPS. The default for Piscal is 12 frames per second. We'll talk about what that means in just a second. Um, but what we want to do is we need to have frames in order to have an animation. Right now we only have one frame, so there is nothing to animate. You can do this two ways. The first is you can click right here where it says add new frame and you can see that my little apple is flashing. So what's that, what is done is it's made a blank frame. I know it looks like there's a happy apple here, but that's because I have the onion on. So what the onion does is it's giving you a ghost image of the frame before, or we call that an onion layer. That's why it's an onion. So you can turn it on or off. If I turn it off, this is what is actually on frame two. And what is actually on frame two is nothing. And that's why the little apple is pulsing because it's going frame one, frame two, frame one, frame two, frame one, frame two. Um, and it's doing that 12 frames per second. So or six times a second, right? So I'm, um, if I was going to do that and I want to animate it, I would draw something on this layer. So I could, you know, do this. And now you'll see it's going to go to my squiggle and then to the apple, right? Um, so a lot of people, a lot of students, what they like to do is they just start redrawing the frame before it um, in order to animate it. That to me is a lot of work. So I'm going to hover right here and show you a sort of nice trick. If you hover over frame one, there's something called duplicate this frame. So now frame two is just a copy of frame one. Doesn't look like anything's happening because it's going frame one, frame two, but they're exactly the same. But I can do things, I can change it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by changing the eyes. Can you see already something's happening here? And so isn't it nice to have this preview? So I've gone from side to up, and you can see it's really fast. I can slow it down a little bit if I want. Um, it's up to you. So I'm gonna continue to make a few frames.
So see, I've got the little eyes going now. And... All right, so now I have some nice little eyes that are going on. It's kind of cute, right? So I'm going to continue to animate this a little bit and then I'll come back and show you what's going on. So I've just finished creating my animation and you can see I have 31 frames. I would say for your first animation, shoot for two to four frames. You don't have to go all the way to 31. I just got really excited today. Um, as you can see, I'm at three frames per second. Um, so that's not a lot of art for every second, but I can also speed it up if I want. And you can see the more I speed it up, it sort of feels like the smoother things go. Um, I don't know, that feels a little fast to me. Maybe I'll be right there. So once I like it, I want to make sure I save. And I would honestly just save, you know, every time you finish a frame, I would save you know, in case it crashes, because that does happen. Um, once you're done, you would like to have a way to save it to your computer, because the great thing about an animated GIF, which is what we are creating, um, is that you can insert it into PowerPoint, you can insert it into Google Slides, you can put it into a website, you can put it into Scratch. There's so many things you can do with these types of animations. You can use them um, to respond to things on Facebook or on social media, just all sorts of cool things. Um, so the way you're going to do that is you're going to go to the mountain that's why I tell my students to export and everybody always wants to click um, download first right because it says download if you click download it's just going to default download if you're on a PC to your downloads folder if you're on a Mac wherever you have your downloads go to if students are on a Chromebook it's just going to go to their Google Drive but Piskel randomly assigns it a name and it's not Piskel it's like a ton of numbers and they have some type of algorithm the problem is you can never find it and when a student does it especially they tell you I can't find it and they give it to you to find and you're thinking I have no idea how to find it either um, so you want to sort of build the procedure of students naming things before they save them. Also, where this says resolution, this is really small. That's 288 pixels by 288 pixels. It's very easy to make a large thing smaller, but not to make a small thing larger. So before you um, save this to your computer, I always encourage students to kind of put it at that 900 place. That's usually a fairly good place. And in instead of clicking download, we're going to actually collect click, excuse me, upload. That feels a little awkward, but I promise you it'll work. So I'm going to click upload and it's telling me down here that it's working. So the longer your animation, the longer it's going to take to work. So we just have to be patient. Okay. And then it gives me this little yellow link. So that's what I want. I'm going to click on the yellow link. It opens up a new web page for me and there is my animation. The way I save it is I right click on it just like you right click and save an image. I right click, save image as, and then I'm going to choose a place to put it. You can see I already have some GIFs in here. So I'm going to say the happy apple GIF and I'm actually going to call it animated GIF. And then I'm going to click save. Now it's saved to my computer. I can email it to friends. I can put it into presentations. I'm going to put it into the website I'm showing you guys today. So that is just sort of a basic Cliff Notes version of how to get started with Piskel. Once you're here, I always like to save to your gallery again. And then you can go back to your gallery and it'll show you there it is. You can always go back and edit this anytime you want. You can copy it. You can also delete it. I don't know why we would want to do that. We just spent so much time on it. Um, so that's my sort of basic intro to Piskel. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me or reach out to me on social media. I'm at Artful Artsy Amy. Thanks.